Hello, welcome to Breath, the new science of a lost art expert Q&A. We're here talking about sleep and breathing and breathing and sleep. And we're joined by none other than Nancy Rothstein, aka the Sleep Ambassador. She's been educating people and corporations about the importance of sleep and how to optimize it for more than a decade. And she is here today to answer some questions about breathing and sleeping, specifically how to do both better the first question is from Terry. My husband snores. He's been snoring for years and it's getting worse. What is the first thing he can do to reduce snoring and sleep better? Nancy, what do you say? What's the first action you can take, Terry, for your husband? You said this has been going on for a while. Seek medical attention, likely from a sleep specialist, to evaluate what is going on. This is not something to be ignored. I have mild sleep apnea. I'm probably the first person who was ever excited about trying a CPAP. Now I wear an oral appliance and it's, it's age related, all kinds of issues as to why I have it. But your husband has to be evaluated. I don't know if he wakes up tired. I don't know if he wakes up with headaches. I don't know if he falls asleep in the afternoon and hopefully isn't driving drowsy but this isn't something to ignore. Sleep apnea is a public health epidemic. 85% of the people who have it aren't diagnosed, and it leads to myriad things, depression, hypertension, cardiovascular disease. So get your husband to be evaluated. There's going to be lots of resources on James's site as to where do you go, where do you start, and it's all you know, this is all heightened all the more because of COVID. People are focused on respiratory issues and breathing. And that may be a good thing because people need to understand that breathing and how you do it matters for sleep and your waking hours. So I hope that helps. The next question is from Brian. I'm a 35 year old healthy male and I was diagnosed with central sleep apnea. Now, central sleep apnea is not caused by obstruction in the throat. It is caused by a neurological problem, just to make that clear for everyone. Despite the fact that I'm not overweight and don't use narcotics, I still have this sleep apnea. I use a CPAP, but was curious if there were any breathing exercises I could be doing along with that CPAP to help myself breathe better. Nancy. And that is such a great question because central sleep apnea is different from obstructive sleep apnea, but the fact is untreated, it's still impacting the quality of your life and your sleep. So kudos to you for wearing your CPAP. Are there other breathing techniques? You know, one of the things about CPAP is people wear it all night, but how are they breathing during the day? You know, you take off the mask, it's effectively a blower motor, you opened your airway, you did what your brain's having trouble doing with central sleep apnea, but yes, there are breathing techniques to enhance your breathing during your waking hours and during sleep. So look into Patrick McEwen on the, another expert Q&A, look at edherald.com and other resources James will provide. If they're not in his book, they'll be listed on his website as to things you can do. But the other thing, and I'll probably refer to this again, that you can do in addition to breathing techniques is to make sure you have good sleep habits often called sleep hygiene. I refer to it as disordered sleep. And you want to prepare for sleep and transition to sleep and make sure that you are setting the stage for a good night's sleep. Because if you're eating a meal late, drinking wine before sleep, or watching TV and on your phone in bed, your CPAP can't do everything it's supposed to do because you are inhibiting other aspects of getting a good night's sleep. Is there any way to measure my sleep quality without going to a sleep lab? So the fact that you think you snore and might have sleep apnea is a red flag for you to take action. So you don't want to go to sleep lab and many are, have, been, have been closed and some are open now, but there is something called a home sleep test and that you can do. I've done them. It's really pretty cool. You do it in the confines of your own bed, your own pillow, your own sleep environment. It's a lot easier. So you need to talk to your doctor and probably a sleep specialist because not all primary care physicians are trained in sleep. 
and don't know exactly where to go. Again, there'll be resources on James' site giving you, you know, bona fide references as to what's the next step. But you really should check this out and um, really find out if you, if you do have it. Because you think you snore, you think you might. What are the, I don't know what your other symptoms are. I don't know if you're tired during the day. I don't know if you stop breathing at night. But kudos to you for even recognizing and seeking something. But don't do nothing. You know, really look into having a home sleep test. The next question from Gerald. I think my nostrils are too small. I did that coddles maneuver and felt I could breathe a lot better. Is there anything else I can do to improve airway health? So uh, just to be clear, the coddles maneuver is when you take your two fingers and you go like this. And if you can breathe better that way, it suggests that possibly you have either nasal collapse or your nostrils aren't, too, aren't big enough for proper airway flow. Nancy, what right. do you think? Or as you write in about in your book, a deviated septum. I mean, when you talked about the percentage, was it 60% of people have a deviated septum or thereabouts? That's significant. That means, you know, some people you plug one side, take a breath, you plug the other side, you may notice a big difference. Well, it switches every 90 minutes for one. But also, if you have a constricted airway, nasal airway, because of a deviated septum, you might want to do something about that. And long before surgery, you need to look at things like a nasal dilator. And by the way, if most people's two na nasal passages are different sizes. It's very interesting. You don't realize it. And I, I do a lot of looking at people's nostrils. So I'm like, oh, that's so interesting. But yes, there is something to you do. And when you did the coddles maneuver, that is a visceral experience. You're like, whoa. So when you can put in a nasal dilator and there is breathe right, but this to me is much more effective and doesn't have the stickiness and all that. It's really pretty incredible. And for the record, I, I don't know why, I've known about this, I've been using these for years, I don't know why I didn't think of this sooner, but I have been wearing a mute under my mask and I do a lot of walking, I'm outside a lot. Unbelievable difference in breathing under my mask. So that's also a tip. So yes, there are things you can do. And, but if you do this and you're still having trouble and what small nostrils means, I don't know for you, but do see an ENT who is educated and proficient in sleep. The next question is from Tim. I use sleep tape and it's helped me a ton. If people don't know what sleep tape is, I so happen to have a little piece of tape here. It's about doing this. Training the jaw shut. You can still breathe the sides of the mouth if you want. Take it off. Use your tongue. That's sleep tape. Not a lot of advanced technology there. But Tim wants to know if there are other recommendations to help improve nasal breathing during sleep. Yeah. By the way, on mouth taping, um, another expert Q&A on, on James's site is by Dr. Berheni. And it's really, really good about taping. And I love that he said, it's a reminder. It isn't about taping and it's about a reminder. And a great thing to do for everybody if you're gonna try taping is do it when you're awake. Don't do it the first time to go to sleep. It's gonna be weird. It's like, oh my God, what's gonna happen? Try it while you're watching TV or at the computer to get used to it. And whether you put it across your mouth or you use a strip like Somnifix or you use the same tape, the blue Next Care, that uh, sensitive skin that James and I use, it's, it's do what works for you. You do not need duct tape. And whether you use it vertically or horizontally, that's up to what you're comfortable with. But it is a great training method to get away from mouth breathing to nasal breathing and really can help with sleep. Um, other things, again, as I just mentioned, I really think you should consider trying mute or another nasal dilator that you can insert. And it takes, so you don't have to do anything. You just put it in and it's going to open your airway. And, and by the way, when you first try it, close your eyes and take a few breaths with your mouth closed, if you can breathe through your nose, and see what that feels like, then put it in. And you'll, and likely, rarely does someone say, I don't feel a difference. But it, it, I think it's a great, I think it's a great technology to try and actually first try it when you're awake. So I have a question. Uh, I was introduced to incline bed therapy a while ago, and I thought it was very interesting. I've tried it out. I really like it. Do you have any opinions, and can you describe what incline bed therapy is? 
Well, if, if I have it right, I hadn't actually heard that term per se. It's like putting a couple wooden blocks under at the head of your bed under the, you know, if, if you have a big platform, it's going to be tough to do. But I had them and I had a carpenter like hollow them out so the wheels weren't rolling off. And it's good for people who have GERD reflux or it's good for people with sleep apnea, but it is not a be all cure all. If you have to do that, your body is saying to you, I have an issue. Got to listen to your body and say, wait a minute, you know, this may be a help, but what's the underlying issue? Am I addressing it? So I think it can be a great thing to do more so in a way than having an incline pillow or a wedge pillow or whatever, which may set off the alignment not to be right, which is a whole nother issue of your spine and your neck and all of those things. So I do think that can work. Next question from Barb. COVID has made me very nervous, as with everyone else. I feel that my sleep is suffering and it was never very good to begin with. Is there any breathing practice that can help me sleep and breathe better during this pandemic? You know, first I want to say that this whole new focus on how to breathe is a little overwhelming for people. You know, there's a zillion, you have such good resources with all your breathing videos, but it's a little bit daunting. And it's like, oh my God, I was just breathing. Now I have to try to do this and try to do that. Okay, everybody, let's take a step back. And let's say, how do I address this as simply as possible so that I can do this? And Barb, you're not alone. That's why I created, it's on my website, sleepambassador.com, a two minute video about good practices for sleep and breathing for COVID. And that, that was in two minutes. I mean, it didn't have to be two hours. But as far as breathing is concerned, there's a couple techniques I wanna share. And, and as far as really explicit breathing techniques and practicing nasal versus mouth breathing, there's lots of resources, Patrick McEwen's on, on your site, and, and lots of other resources for that in the video, breathing videos. But here is somewhere to start. So Thich Nhat Hanh, who's a monk, who's quite extraordinary, talked about the space between your breath in and your breath out. And if you close your eyes right now and you take a breath in and you pause for a second, I don't want you to regularly pause, and then you breathe out, that space is as present as you can be. Everybody talks about be present, be in the moment. That's it. Your mind's often in the past or the future, but your body is always honest and present. And you can start there to become even aware of your breathing, whether you're stuck in traffic or tense or stressed out at a meeting, be it on Zoom or wherever, or you're having trouble falling asleep. That's a place to start to become familiar with your breath, the space and breathe out. So that, that's a way just to calm yourself in any instance. But, and, and think of it this way, that space is as present as you can be. Breathing out is everything that was and breathing in is everything for the future. But that space is right now. And it's hard to be in the present these days. There's a lot we're thinking about. The second thing I want to suggest is a breathing technique, which I find so efficient. I found it's like all this noise and how when I'm standing in front of a corporate audience or writing a sleep program, what can I give people that's efficient? You know, what's the average attention span, James? Like 11 seconds. So I thought, how am I going to do this <clears throat> and get people out of their heads? So now pretend you're laying in bed and you've got a million things on your mind. Well, one, have a piece of paper next to your bed so you can get them out of your head and onto paper. And I'm not talking about, journaling's great, but just little things. But here's something you could try in bed, and Barb, maybe this will help you with the anxiety and just to get out of your head. So as I just said, your body's always in the present. You gotta breathe. And gratitude is an extraordinary way to get out of worries and woes and frustrations and anger and fear and get your literally your brain into a place of peace to transition to sleep. So what do you do? You combine breathing, body awareness, and gratitude. So I suggest that when you lay in bed, if you're having trouble falling asleep or you awaken during the night, there's great breathing techniques for that. Ed Harold has some of them. 
But here's something you can empower yourself to do very easily. You close your eyes and you breathe into your feet. I'm getting you out of your head. And you literally feel your feet. You don't have to tense them and all that stuff. You just feel them and you thank them. And you say, thank you feet for all you've done for me today. You can rest now. And you get, you're getting the picture. You go up your legs and you thank them. And if you have a pain in your knee, you have some knee problem, spend a little time there, give it a little love. Breathe into your abdomen. Thank your digestive system for all it's done for you, whether you've eaten well or bad, poorly that day. Thank it. Breathe into it. Be grateful. And then whoever thanks their heart, go to your heart. It's not stopping during the night. Unlike your feet, it's not going to get the same rest. Thank your heart for all it does for you. And then, you know, you're really getting the picture. Go up, thank your nose, your eyes. If we can see, we're so lucky. Thank your eyes and tell them they can rest. And maybe, just maybe, you've already fallen asleep. So we've combined gratitude, body awareness, and breathing into each of these places for a very efficient technique to help you fall asleep. And I hope, Barb, I hope that helps. Thank you, Nancy. We have one more question. It's from John. Is poor sleep a psychological problem or is it a physical problem? Breath seems to mention that many sleep problems are associated with breathing. How do we know if we're suffering from one or the other? Such a great question because it can be both. We forget about the impact of sleep and breathing on mental health. You know, when you're really tense and people tend to, to start hyperventilating, nobody hyperventilates through their nose. <laughs> They're going, <laughs> <laughs> and right then and there, you are activating your sympathetic nervous system, which is fight or flight, and you are over breathing. Ask Patrick McEwen of the Oxygen Advantage about that. When you're nasal breathing, it's your parasympathetic, your calming nervous system. So, but what's the, what's the cause of this? Is it psychological? Is it worried? Is it depression? Is it anxiety? Or is it physiological? Your nose is so clogged all the time that you have to mouth breathe. So it could be both during your waking hours and during sleep. So you need to delve into figuring out your, for you, because nobody's breathing or sleeping for you, but you. You need to sort of really take a close look Spend some time thinking about it. Maybe take some notes. If you can't figure it out, see your doctor and just ask yourself, you know, what's a great telltale sign? All of these, all of these um, devices, whether it's your Apple Watch and the Aura Ring, they can all be terrific if they give you information that you act upon. But I want you to know that your best sleep and breathing technology is inside of you. It's right there. We were designed to do both. And the question is, are you using it well or do you need help? Do you need an external technology? Do you need a mute? Do you need a CPAP? Do you need some kind of a, um, do you need a doctor to look at the technology inside of you and whether it's working well or not? All of these things are important. And one of the best ways to know if you're getting a good night's sleep is how do you feel in the morning? Are you rested? Do you feel rejuvenated? Are you falling asleep in the afternoon? Do you need a lot of coffee to stay awake? And during the day, if you find yourself anxious a lot, notice when you're stressed, if you're nasal or mouth breathing. I mean, just start to pay attention. Your body through your brain is giving you incredible signals. You just have to pay attention. But the really important thing, everyone, this is all doable. This is possible. But not taking steps to improve your breathing, to improve your sleep, can lead to myriad physical and mental health and even spiritual issues that you want to address so you can live your best life. And whether the challenging times are now that we're living through with this pandemic, they're actually sparking people to take action that they might not have otherwise. We were so busy doing. Now we're really thinking about how we are being. And to be 
healthy and well, you need to breathe well and you need to sleep well. So. Nancy, thank you very much. Breathe well, sleep well. We'll see you next time. Thank you.